So this month, May 2023, marks the 20th anniversary of CCP Games EVE Online, one of the great nation of Iceland's chief cultural exports. And I don't know, I just kind of wanted to tell my my EVE Online story, my story with EVE Online, because it has been a very influential game in my life, personally and creatively. My first introduction to EVE Online would have been circa uh, 2011 or 2012, because in high school I was working summers at a post house in Orlando, Florida, and um, one of the other editors there, we were chatting on a break about, uh, I don't even remember what, but somehow my interest in science fiction must have come up and my interest in video games must have come up. And this other editor asked me if I had ever heard of this game called EVE Online. And I hadn't, and he started describing it to me. It's you know, this big, grand kind of sci-fi setting. You know, all these different ships, you can be part of your own corporation, there's all this different stuff you can do. And it sounded immediately very appealing to me. Because I think the impetus for my interest in science fiction would obviously be Star Wars and then uh, Treasure Planet, which was the other kind of big name sci-fi movie that I watched a lot growing up and then more like historical spacefaring stuff like Apollo 13 and the right stuff but then EVE Online was a different side of spacefaring science fiction that I hadn't really ever grappled with before and so I went home I downloaded the game um, he invited me to the corporation that he was in it wasn't a super big corp it was probably uh, 30 or 40 people and I started my EVE Online adventure EVE Online was the first game that I'd played where the experience of playing the game extended beyond the game itself. I had an app that was for like my character mail and, and ship fittings and all that and I got push notifications if you know a message was sent out to the whole corp. And on Christmas, probably 2013 or 2014, we get a, a message that another corp is attacking our base on Christmas. 15 minutes before family dinner, I get a message that the base is being attacked. Hey, anybody who can come help defend it, come defend it. It ain't me. And other people who had like gone out of town to be with their families. I'm not even near, you know, the computer that has Eve on it. That's always stuck in my mind as such a, a weird thing to go attack someone else's base on Christmas because you assume that they won't be able to mount any sort of meaningful defense. Well, that's just kind of neat. And how the experience of the game affected me outside of it. At one point, right after I had trained into battleships for the first time, I had saved up just enough money to buy an Abaddon class, which I wanted to buy an APOC because that ship, I think, is my favorite ship design in the whole game. And I do have one now, and I love it. But I had bought an Abaddon because I was able to find one cheaper at a station a little bit further away. And I bought it, and I flew out there, and I picked it up, and I set the route home, and I wasn't paying attention. And there was one low-sec system in between me and my home station. The minute that I entered that low-sec system, there were a group of folks waiting on the gate and my Abaddon got demolished. And I'd had it insured, so I did get most of the cost of it back. And then that was at a point where I was still in the good graces of our corp. They spotted me the money to buy an APOC. You know, I, I was super into EVE for a very long time, and I still am, even though I don't play very actively. I bought the big lore book that they came out with, and the, the art book. Within the last couple of years, one of the artists that I commissioned to make a spaceship for a TV show that I was developing got hired to to do ship design on EVE like a couple months after he did work for me. So I don't know if the ship he designed for me was, was in the portfolio that he sent to CCP, but it'd be cool if it was. It wasn't until playing EVE Online that I really got to thinking about spacecraft design and the, the whole kind of artistry of it. And it became kind of this very influential presence in my life as then in fall of 2012, I went off to school for film stuff. Then in 2014, I took my first screenwriting class and we were kind of given free reign to write whatever the heck we wanted. And so I, of course, decided I'm gonna write big expensive genre fiction, a uh, big spacefaring adventure. EVE Online was a very big influence in 
the pre-production work that I did on that. I've talked about this in much greater detail in a video I made for my personal channel about how I wrote my first novel. And I talked about how in pre-production, in figuring out, I'm like, okay, I want to write a story that's about people on a spaceship. I need to figure out the spaceship so that then I can figure out how big the crew needs to be so I can figure out how many characters I need to develop. And so I specifically kind of used the Galente Algos class destroyer as a template for the size and complexity of a ship that I wanted. Yeah, just a lot of really great ship design in, in EVE Online. I played most regularly between 2011 and 2015. And then ever since then, there'll be a couple weeks out of the year where I re-download EVE and see what's up, especially since they went free to play. And yeah, those are, those are some of my stories from my time in EVE Online. But thank you. To all the folks at CCP Games who've worked on EVE Online over the years, I think y'all are really cool. And I think your game's really cool. So tell me about your most interesting time in EVE Online. Drop that down in the comments. And if you like this, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and uh, maybe we'll do more EVE Online content in the future. I am Jake Terrio. This is Subpixel. Thanks for watching.